Today I'll be tying a green drake hatchmaster. It uses one feather for the body and the wings and another feather for the hackle. But in this case I'll be using two feathers for the hackle and I'll explain why when I get to that point. The hook I'm using is a Daiichi 1310, a size 14. I like it, it's a 1x short and it works for the body of the extended body of the mayfly. The thread is some Danville 70 denier olive. And those are the pieces. For the body of the fly and the wings, I'm using a mallard flank olive, dyed olive, and you can tell even though they're marked exactly the same, the dye is a little bit different. So depending upon which one you choose, I don't know that it makes a difference. I'll pull some of these feathers out in a minute after I finish a fly, but I've already prepared a few feathers. And this is how I want my feathers to start with. So let's put a hook in the vise and get started. I like to start right at the eye of the hook and make touching turns. I'm going to go to the point, the hook point, and go about three or four turns beyond that, and then come back. And the reason I do that, this thread under base will allow the round stem to be secured to a round hook much easier. If you were to try to put it onto a bare hook, you would have a lot of problems with it. Now, when you start these, the feather looks like this. I've stripped off all the bottom. and I take a piece like that and that's going to be my body and where most people have problem is how much hackle or how many barbs to include for the wing and that just takes some practice but I'm going to pull off a few here and go ahead and tie this on so I wanted about the length of the hook shank and you notice it's straight up and down from the hook. And I'll take a loose wrap and pull up and that will twist the feather so it'll be directly on top of the hook. And right there it will twist a lot but I'm going to hold it and make touching turns going forward. See how far forward I am. I'll pull these fibers upright and you see that the stem protrudes over the front. So I will continue to wrap thread and bind that down. and then come back to right at the base of the feather. And now I will separate these so they're about even, close to even. And then just make a couple of cross wraps here, X, and that'll separate those fibers. I've got some short ones here and I'm going to remove those immediately so I don't have to worry about them. And the other thing I like to do before I go too much farther is cut out the tail. So I like to have a couple of barbs on each side And these are 
What I used to do is tie the whole fly and then come back and tie these and cut off the tail. And that isn't the best of method to use. So I'm going to take my scissor point and go right into the open spots. And if you notice, I just take, I didn't get this, all of the tail, so I'm going to take it and I've got my scissor points in and I'll just slide them down. And then that's my tail. The other thing I like to do is have my thread be flat and then I will make several wraps around these wings. So four or five wraps going up and then a couple down the wing. Make a wrap or two around the hook shank so that you're not going to put any torque on the other wing. And then I will wrap the second wing. And I'm holding the wing tight and then I let go. I'll go down and then make a wrap around. I don't know if that's critical, that's just how I do it. If you don't, they might splay out a little bit more, which is absolutely fine too. Now I'll go back right where I tied in, which should be above the point of the hook. For the hackle, I'm using a Rusty Dunn, a Bard Dunn, which is a, this happens to be a Collins uh, Hackle Farm neck. I just love the natural colors for this. And I've selected some size 14 feathers. I will pull off some of the barbs and we'll tie that in. I'll put one over the top one behind and then two or three wraps on the forward side and bend that forward so it's at 90 degrees. Make a wrap and come backwards. And you notice that these aren't super long hackles and so that's why I'm using two of them. For my second feather, I've taken off the barbs on the stem as well and I'm going to mount it just a little bit closer to me so they're in two different locations one in front or one over the top one behind and then a couple of wraps going forward and I'll again I'll pull that so it is about 90 degrees and allow it easier I'm using some super fine olive dubbing gray olive dubbing and I'm just going to put a very slim base of, th of dubbing. And that will allow the hackle to seat a little bit better. And I'm going to go backwards and make a wrap or two behind the wings. And then with just with touching turns going forward. Pull the wings upright, move them back out of the way, and just make some touching turns going forward. And I've stopped, I want to make sure I have about an eye length be in front of the hook, that's where I'll stop my thread. The second feather is the one I'll start wrapping first. And this one is starting just a little bit in front of the first hackle that I tied in. I'm using open turns and I'll make four turns in back. Hold the wing upright and put a turn right at the base. There's two wraps and three wraps. 
For my green drakes, I like to have a thick wing. If you're going to tie this for another insect, let's say a calabatus, you only need one feather and probably three wraps behind and two wraps in front. Now you notice I put three turns of thread over the hackle and I'll make two more wraps in front. And I'm not going to trim this. I've had problems if you bump this, it, the, it allows the feather sometimes to unravel. And so by making three wraps over the th over the hackle and then two here, if I were to bump that, the two additional ones in the front would probably prevent that from going backwards or creating some looseness and allowing everything to come undone. So this time I'm going to pace, place a wrap right at the back and then you'll notice that I wiggle the hackle through And again, I'll take four wraps behind and three wraps in front. And yes, this is a heavily hackled fly. I'll take out, I'll remove those two wraps that I had to secure. So I still have three wraps on that. And I switch hands. I take my thread straight up, I move the hackle forward, and I drop my thread. And what that does, it opens the barbules and I'm able to put a wrap of thread right next to the, the stem and I don't get near as many barbules caught up. So there's three wraps holding that. And I will, I, I put my hand on my vise a lot to s secure my scissors so they don't bounce all over the place and make a nice cut. I flatten my thread and I will go backwards, flatten my thread again and make a five turn whip finish going forward. Tighten it up. And if you've got really sharp scissors, you just put it right next to the thread and push. And you see how tall those wings are. I'll put them towards me, but I'm going to go about um, one and a half above, one and a half times the shank or the, the hackle. And then I'll move these out and that's your wing. The last thing I do, I take this out of the vise and I trim the hackle even with the hook point. And I just like the way it sits in the water like that. And that is your Green Dray Catchmaster. Again, this is tied in a size 14. I tie them in 12s as well. But you can tie this style of fly to match any mayfly. Now the trick is of being successful with this is as you pull out all of these feathers. This is a brand new package. I haven't even looked at it yet. But here's some small feathers which might be good for a 14 or a 16. Here's a little bit larger one, which would be perfect for this fly. That's probably some garbage. I wouldn't be able to use it for this fly at all. Here's a beautiful feather. So you notice I've got similar lengths on each side. It's very symmetrical. That's what I'm looking for. And then these are some larger feathers. Actually, there's some smaller ones in here too, which are good. So in each package, you never know what you're gonna get. And at times I'll buy in three and four packages at a time. So to prep these, I'll just take these, open them up and 
Just pull off the garbage along the side. Hold, hold the feather and then just easily pull these out. If you pull them hard, they'll start, start stripping on the side. And that would be a nice, a nice body for this fly. The other thing that people have problems with is how much material do I have, have here to work with? How much do I tie in? So let me quickly put that in. I won't tie a whole fly, but I'm just going to show you. I'll use that whole piece. and show you how I manage it. I'll quickly go back beyond, come up. I'm about right at the hook point now with my thread base. Pulled the same feather. Again, to mount it, I'm gonna have, hold it directly on top. And then with a soft wrap, and then pull up and make a couple more wraps. You can still move it around. You notice this is a, a little bit loose in there. So let me unwrap it and hold on. Actually, I'll mount it again. I don't like that. So I'll do it tight, hold it tight. And that's body's better. Make sure everything's on top of the hook. And as I pull these fibers up now, you'll notice that the stem has barbules all the way to the eye. And if I were to pull those back and wrap forward, then I have a little bit of a mess here. That's a little bit more difficult to manage. And so what you can do is pull these fibers back and carefully remove some of those. And then as I pull this up, Use my thread to go forward. And back. And let's see if I have a decent wing now. Yeah, so that should work. So I should be able to split that. Twist that a little bit. And again, as you prepare the tail, you can just take your scissor points and put them through. I'm putting it right next to my finger now. And then use the other one, the other point. And that's another way that you can easily Trim a tail. So there you go. Hope you like that. If you like this video, be sure to click the like button below. You can subscribe to my Riverkeeper Flies website and, or excuse me, my Riverkeeper Flies YouTube channel. And I will provide a link to the fly pattern sheet below. Hope you can tie some good flies with that.